Self-illumination is essentially a shading trick that makes it seem like the surface is emitting its own light. Now this is independent of light sources that you have in your scene. By increasing the self-illumination percentage, the object will get brighter. And essentially the diffuse component starts to predominate. The teapot looks more and more red the higher I increase this percentage. Use self-illumination to simulate things like lampshades that are glowing with light passing through the object. Another way of using self-illumination is by using this checkbox. When you check the box, the percentage disappears and it's replaced by a color swatch. By default, the color swatch will be pure black, meaning the material is not self-illuminating. If you increase the whiteness, you will increase the amount of self-illumination. Another intriguing possibility here is that you can use a color to make the object self-illuminate, so that the shaded result is a combination of the self-illumination color plus these primary visual components. So it makes the surface more complex. Now, in general, you ought to stay away from self-illumination unless you need this sort of as an override to the lighting in your scene. By the way, these blank boxes to the right of these components are map slots, and this is something that I'll cover later. This lock allows you to lock the map slot of the diffuse component to the map slot of the ambient component, and they're locked by default. I can unlock them, and you'll see that there's a unique map slot that appears there. This is just the mechanics of how this user interface works. I'll turn off self-illumination, and let's talk about opacity. This refers to how solid an object appears. Right now it's completely solid. If I decrease the opacity, we will be making a translucent material where the light will pass through. If we decrease opacity all the way to zero, we will only see the specular component because the light is passing through the ambient and diffuse co uh, components completely. Now we would be able to see objects beyond and right now I don't have anything in the scene so let me close active shade and unhide all and here I have a plain object. Perhaps I'll assign a material to that just leaving it a gray color and now we can start to see through the teapot onto the plane. It's helpful to turn on the background in the material editor when you're dealing with transparent materials. That way you can start to see this background pattern appear through the sample sphere. Glass is never 0% opaque. It's always something like 10 to 15 percent opaque. 